the people, the freedom. There are vendors, there are speakers. I'm going to be on a panel. Uh, I'm here to meet and shake hands with the people who are building the free future today. Like-minded people who I find fascinating. Um, it's just a pleasure and honor being next to Thomas Drake, a uh, lawyer of Edward Snowden, and all these great minds that came here. Uh, I like learning and I like meeting people, so this is a perfect place. It brings me to Liberty Forum. Uh, I want to hang out with the people here, and this is a large congregation of a lot of my favorite people. Well, I'm just here to meet a lot of liberty minded people, which is already pretty easy in New Hampshire, but I want to see a lot of people from out of state and encourage them to come here and stay here. Forever. What brings you to Liberty Forum? Uh, well, I moved to New Hampshire in 2011, and uh, I moved here for more liberty, and Liberty Forum is the place where we get to host other people to come here. Uh, hopefully convince them to come to, you know, to move to New Hampshire to find more freedom in their lifetime. What brings you to Liberty Forum? Oh, what brings me to Liberty Forum? Um, I've known about the Free State Project for about two and a half years now, and I'm very intrigued by it. Um, I love attending Liberty Conventions, but this one in particular, I really want to come check out New Hampshire. I want to show my support for the Porcupines. And uh, to be honest with you, I really feel like Free staters are accomplishing something really amazing here, and I'm considering becoming a part of it. What brings you to Liberty Forum? Well, this is a big event each year for Liberty lovers from across the United States to come check out New Hampshire, meet to sort of the ground central, the libertarian mecca for the United States. It's a great place to exchange ideas and learn about the many paths to freedom, and I think it's one of the best opportunities for the new to the liberty movement to come find out what's going on, what the activists are doing. What brings you to Liberty Forum? Liberty Forum is an event each year that attracts a lot of people who really embrace and I'd say embody many of the ideas that I'd like to see replicated in the world. Some people would call those ideas liberty, some people would have their own labels for them. Anarchism, self-government, self-ownership, uh, responsibility, whatever it is that people feel that uh, is something that would progress the world. It's not necessarily driven by profit or driven by monetary incentive driven by a desire to see something better for each other. So that's what draws me to Liberty Forum each year, seeing all of those people in one place. What drives your passion for liberty? Oh. It's, it's innate. Yeah. Everyone has a passion for liberty. It's just how much you express it. What drives your passion for liberty? You know, it, to me it's a moral um, issue. I think that... Um, That for me, even though I could live a reasonably good life because I have, you know, sort of all the privileges that go with being who I am, doesn't mean that other people can. And when I was um, when I was little, they taught me the golden rule, and it kind of stuck. What drives your passion for liberty? That's a big question. Um, I want it for myself. I want it for others. And I want everyone to. I would like for everyone to respect that about the other person. I was your passion for liberty. Um, I don't know. I've always had it. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, uh, my mother was trying to get me to do something that I didn't want to do, and I was probably five years old. She hit me with a yardstick, and I took it away from her and broke it. You know, I just I don't like being told what to do. You know, my life is a performance art. What it says depends on what I do, and I need to make my own decisions on what I do. Drives your passion for liberty. Just to be left alone in most ways. I want to be creative. I want to be able to do things without people telling me I can't do them. What drives your passion for liberty? It's my nature. I, I, I feel that it is my nature as a living, breathing homo sapien to be as free as possible. Drives my passion for liberty. I gotta say, I, I grew up in New York and in a religious background, and so I experienced tyranny pretty firsthand for a long time. And so I wanted to get free from both of those. That drives my passion for liberty. What drives your passion for liberty? Sort of all I've ever known. I made a promise about six years ago that wherever one of my friends liberty were, that's where you find it. So here I am. What drives your passion for liberty? 
you know, freedom is something that's always been important to me from the time I was a young adult, and it's just been a primary drive for me. It's just, I don't know, maybe it's just, you're born with it. I really don't know what the drive is. What drives your passion for liberty? Um, my passion for liberty is uh, like um, to play games and persuasively redefine it for people in like surreptitious ways. So um, I'm not necessarily into like teaching you liberty or like the principles of Austrian economics. I want to kind of um, cultivate something deeper and darker within you. What drives your passion for liberty? <laughs> Tough question. <laughs> I think that liberty is something that's universal to everybody. I just don't think anyone realizes it. Um, for me, once I started to realize how little liberty I actually had in the real world, I started to crave that more and more, and the drive to create that in my life as much as possible became a bit overwhelming. What drives your passion for liberty? I want to free the world. I mean, uh... Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's about the destructive sort of influence of government in the world. Like if you look at most tragedies in the world, most genocides, most even slavery requires government. So yeah, it drives my passion for liberty. I mean, liberty is freedom. Who doesn't want to be free? Uh, with what's currently going on, we see our freedoms being restricted every day. So why not stand up for a noble cause? Perhaps it's selfish. It's my desire to see a better reality. I'd say it's also driven by the belief that it shouldn't be too difficult to have a better reality. It seems like a simpler world could be a happier world, a more peaceful world, and one that shouldn't be too hard to embrace with technology and the advances that we have today. What drives your passion for liberty? For me, it's all about self-ownership. So I believe each person has a right to himself to decide what he does with his life, his opportunities, what he eats, what he drinks. For me, that's the, the, sort of the heart of the liberty movement, and I'm in the state legislature here in New Hampshire, so part, a big part of that is to work within the system to try to reduce the size of government, to give people more liberty in their lifetime, to try to uh, sort of roll back the authoritarian state and the control of others, and let people be free. What drives your passion for liberty? Oh, man. Um... I think uh, it has to do with me being uh, generally an optimist and uh, thinking people are good and, uh, and, and seeing the optimism in the liberty movement and, and seeing that, that people are creating things. You know, like the, the, the Lama Su Bitcoin ATM over here or, uh, you know, a business, uh, ShinyBadges.com. Uh, seeing those things spring up out of the movement is really inspiring. You know, uh, listening to anything, uh, any one of Jeffrey Tucker's speeches or, or see, you know, reading his material, you, you get a, a good feel for, uh, you know, the, the, the generally the good nature of people in this movie. What do you hope to see in our lifetime? The awareness of how much power we actually really have in our lives and understanding that the potential to change anything in this world for the better of humanity, for the better of the uh, average person, is within our hands, uh, especially with technology advancing, especially with the world changing as it is right now. We're at a tipping point where technology could be used for very bad things or very good things. What I'm hoping to see in my lifetime is people stand up, empower themselves, and don't look for anybody to be their master or tell them what to do, but to be reliable and just to be good-hearted people that do good things for other people. What do you hope to see in your lifetime? I hope to see 20,000 liberty-minded people moving here as part of the Free State Project and then just amazing things happening after that. It's already been incredible so far and we only have 1,500 people here of the, the inevitable thousands more. So I'm very excited to see what comes out of that, the spontaneous ideas and uh, activism. that We've seen so many things that have been great so far. What's next? I hope to see uh, the loss of belief in inborn authority or uh, titles of authority that aren't given voluntarily. What do you hope to see in your lifetime? In my lifetime, I expect to see governments go the way of the dodo, and uh, I expect to see a far more technology-based future where people can voluntarily choose to interact with whoever they want to interact with. 
What do you hope to see in your lifetime? As far as liberty goes? You know, what I'm thinking is, is that um, I would like to see, you know, I, the, the practical side of me just wants to see the ship of state steered to a smaller port. The impractical side of me says, you know, let's let free people um, try it on their own. Let's let them go someplace and have a little piece of land and see how that goes. Even here in New Hampshire, that's a radical stance to take, but, um, you know, either freedom works or it doesn't, and there's only one way we're going to find out. All these people, you know, pontificating about how things will work or won't work really are just blowing hot air into the atmosphere. I need to see whether it works or not, and the only thing that's fair is to let people see if it works. What do you hope to see in your lifetime? What do you hope to see in my lifetime? Uh, I've seen a few things I hope to see in my lifetime already. Um, I'd like to see um, more conflict and aggressors in my lifetime, like um, for people to become serious about the task ahead of them, for like the deep web to kind of overtake the internet, and for this fractal violence of like, you know, dark markets to kind of penetrate all corners of human existence, and eventually become kind of something we, uh, in the mainstream, we just force ourselves or are resigned to deal with. Um, a kind of separate piece uh, with the forces of crypto anarchy. What do you hope to see in your lifetime? In my lifetime, obviously, I want to see more freedom. Um, I feel right now that technology is really an incredible way to achieve that. I'm a big uh, Bitcoin enthusiast. I love the internet. I love that you and I had never met before today, but we've spoken and uh, shared the same platform, Twitter. Of all things, it seems kind of silly, but what an incredible concept that is. What an incredible idea. I think that uh, technology is the thing that I've really got my eye on right now, and I love that it moves faster than legislation. I want to see that happen more and more. I want to see the state become obsolete. Um, and I want to see people realize their full potential and their capabilities, and I do think that's something that we can hope for. What do you hope to see in your lifetime? Well, I hope to see my lifetime is the collapse of a non-voluntary society. And what do you want to see in your lifetime? What do I want to see? In your lifetime. In my lifetime? I obviously want to see liberty. I want to see people being able to do what they want, when they want, without people stopping them, without people being violent towards them, just being peaceful all around and creative ideas of liberty. What do you hope to see in your lifetime? No, that's not. That's it. Liberty. I want you to do whatever you want to do. There's um, an artist called Nina Simone, and she talks about a bird flying free, and I can't imagine anything more than a bird flying free, and we don't have that. We are no near, nowhere near that. So, yeah, freedom. What do you hope to see in your lifetime? Well, immediately I just want to see 20,000 signers become participants of the Free State Project and start moving to New Hampshire and make this thing work so we can be the beacon of liberty for the entire United States. What do you want to see in your lifetime? Um, well, I mean, I want, the, I want the whole thing. I want uh, complete liberty for everyone. I, I think a modest expectation would be to see one sort of autonomous zone as to set an example to everyone else. Um, but I'm ambitious. I want, I want the whole world free by the end of my life. I hope to see... I, I hope to be able to uh, not have to explain Murray Rothbard, you know, to somebody to... Uh, to explain to them why I do this sort of thing. Um, I, I'm hoping that most of these organizations, like uh, the Free State Projects, like Liberty on the Rocks, will become extinct because we won't need them anymore. Because these ideas will be just a part of society as a whole. What do you hope to see in your lifetime? I hope to see an absence of government. trying to control the lives of others since time immemorial, and it's time.
time to stop and let other people go to hell in their own way if that's what they want. I would like to see New Hampshire successfully secede from the United States without without You hope violence. to see in your lifetime. <laughs> oh, in my lifetime? Liberty in my lifetime. That's why I'm here. Pardon. I'm it. What brings you to Liberty Forum? Uh, the community. <laughs> We're going to do that over here. <laughs> no, I was keeping this. What drives your passion for liberty? Money. <laughs> and the babes. What do you hope to see in your lifetime? Um, liberty. Good morning from Nashua, New Hampshire. We're here outside of the Crown Plaza Hotel with Derek J. Freeman and a group of gathered activists who are here to memorialize the loss of several ducks. This is about the ducks, so I just wanted to make sure. Um, now at the end, people are going to be allowed to speak on whatever they want. Um, so please keep it to a minute though, or less, because we're trying to respect everyone's time. And um, also, don't get run over or anything. Okay, so just to um, give a short wrap up of the situation, um, the incident. So, um, Mr. Campbell, or Honorable Representative Candle, if you will, Campbell was um, driving in the oval the wrong way. It's a one way road, the circle right over there. And uh, he, he saw some ducks, and an unfortunate accident happened. Um, it's a really sad accident. Um, accidents do happen. But unfortunately, he um, did hit a flock of ducks and five of the ducks did die. So I just want, I don't want to focus on that, um, what Mr. Campbell did. I just want to focus on the ducks though. Okay, so I was hoping that we could have just a short moment of silence right now. People don't mind. And then we have um, one candle per duck. Oh, okay. yeah. Be honored. Oh, Only a drunken politician would ever harm these beautiful creatures. We're going to need five volunteers, one per candle. Can we have a volunteer? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, left. You gonna, thank you, sir. How about you look nice? Ducks that were injured. Yeah. Should talk about them. Do we know how many ducks were injured? Sorry, my big question from the media during that. Alright. Okay, so I would just like to remind everyone um, drinking and driving is not a good idea. We saw what happened based on this five dead ducks you know some people might have never met these ducks before and unfortunately they'll never have the chance to now but i've been to this hotel probably at least a dozen times over the last five or six years and i can tell you i've seen some of these ducks grow up here and it's it's really sad that we've lost these ducks due to a tragic drunk driving accident so i hope people keep that in mind that drinking and driving can cause problems in the future 
Um, and it doesn't matter whether you're, you know, someone famous or a regular person, just drinking and driving is not a good idea in general. Now, at this time, I would like to open it up to anyone else that has anything they want to say on the issue or any other issue, I, I take it. Um, please keep your remarks to one minute or less. And then after the remarks are finished by everyone who would like to speak, we are going to go over to the oval um, where the ducks are and just kindly place the candles in the snow in honor of our fallen friends. So, um, would anyone like to speak on this situation or whatnot? Absolutely. Go ahead, sir. Well, as a child, one of my favorite activities with my grandmother was to uh, watch the ducks in our backyard who would grow up and go to the pond near our house. And I ne unfortunately never got to meet these ducks. I've been away from New Hampshire for the last few years and I was here at last Liberty Forum, so it's possible I even saw these ducks crossing the street. I think it's very important for everyone to remember to look out for animals, and especially innocent creatures on the streets. Thank you for those kind words, sir. What? Yes, sir, you would like to speak? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I'm gonna stop eating duck. I'm sorry. Don't drink and drive. Thank you very much, sir. Would anyone else like to speak? Um, um, yes, um, I want to tell everybody that uh, we used to have uh, four pet ducks before we moved to New Hampshire when we lived in Colorado. They had names and uh, my kids' pets. And my kids' feelings were very hurt when they heard about this accident. And I'm really sorry that it happened. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I think this would... Uh, this is an event that really brings about the idea that when there's a lack of personal responsibility, there's a lot of negative consequences that affect many people, not just humans, but our feathered friends as well. And uh, the ducks were very responsible individuals. You never saw them bothering people or messing with people's cars. Um, they were always just very friendly, uh, sitting in the pond. They'd eat food if you threw it to them. Um, I believe that the ducks embodied responsibility, but when someone drunkenly careens into innocent creatures, that's a lack of responsibility. And when they have their friends cover it up for them and hide them from the police for 24 hours, that also demonstrates a lack of responsibility. So I think there's something to be learned from our lost duck friends here, and if we take uh, their if we take their message home, I think maybe we can all be more responsible and learn not to be irresponsible. Thank you, sir. Would anyone else like to speak? I think it's very important that uh, we take notice of this event. After all, it's for the ducks. All right, now, if no one else would like to speak, I would thank you all for coming out here for memorializing our feathered friends. And if we could all, or you don't have to do it, but if you have a candle, if you can please walk towards the oval where the ducks are, and we'll, we'll take a look at the ducks and honor them. If you would like to take a bite. Derek, would you like to lead us towards the...
you around here, how about right there? Good. There are the dark bodies. We watch through. Dog gate was an inside job. There were no dogs. Show me bodies. Give me autopsy report. All right, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I saw the ducks the last two days, but unfortunately, they don't seem to be here right now. But I do appreciate everyone coming. You want to finish the oval? That's all I had. Just keep walking. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm Garrett Eaton. G A R R E T. Last name E A N. And where are you from? Keene, New Hampshire. Fancy. I'm Kim with the Union Leader. Cool. Thank you. Questions? Committee? Uh, sure, I have a question for the uh, director, the chairman of the Parking Commission. Um, I noticed that there was also an idea attached. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, so Garrett so. Ian, Leverett Street. Um, I noticed that there was also a proposal attached to this parking rate increase, and I would speak against any increases, especially the drastic increase of the um, long-term lots as opposed to the short-term lots. Um, but one of the things I found most concerning was a proposal that only quarters would be able to be used in the meters. Now, I wonder why only one particular type of coin would be selected, especially considering that if you look at uh, the rate increases, they're all divisible by nickels. Um, if it was 25 cents gets you 30 minutes, a nickel would get you six minutes. If 25 cents got you 20 minutes, a nickel would get you four minutes. So I don't see why there would be an intentional uh, push to make it difficult for the people to be able to purchase time by only having one type of coin that they can use. It seems to me to be a deliberate attempt to make it more difficult for people to pay their meters and uh, so that they're less likely to pay, so they're more likely to get tickets. Um, Robin Hood of Keene and the Merry People would still be able to take care of everyone and pay with quarters, and we'd see about distributing more quarters to more people. Um, but I don't see why... Uh, this wouldn't, this wouldn't affect Robin Hood, but it definitely would affect the people, so I would stand against this move to make it so you have to spend a quarter in order to buy time on a meter. Thank you. So I'll make clear that up. 